In leadership, we often hear the phrase, holding people accountable. That feels negative to me a little bit, and I wonder how we can include an environment or create an environment that helps people be accountable or want to take accountability, rather than us feeling like we have to hold them accountable. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give another homey little illustration here. Uh, when I was at BYU-Idaho, I taught a religion class every semester. It was a Teachings of the Living Prophets class. And the basic approach was this. If you do everything in the syllabus, and you do it extremely well, with a high level of confidence, the highest grade you can hope for is a C. Because you have met the requirements, and that's C work. If you want to get a B or an A, then you have to identify what you're going to do above and beyond the minimum requirements of the syllabus to get an A or a B. Now, you don't determine that alone. You have to counsel with me about it if you're a student. And we will come to an agreement of what it is that will get you a B and what it is that will get you an A. And then you have to execute that. And at the end of the semester, you will come and give an accounting of whether you did or did not do the things that you said you would do. So the final exam was a student coming to present a portfolio, not to just grease me, you know, and to try to, because I was, I think, reasonably discerning about now, wait a minute. If I were to bring five illustrations of what these students did to get an A, I don't think you'd believe it. You never could have imposed upon them an assignment that they would have done at the level at which they performed. It was unbelievable. I'll just give you one. One student took every single talk in general conference ever given by President Gordon B. Hinckley and identified the major themes and then prepared materials that would be used in a future family related to the themes as taught by President Hinckley. A second one. Now, do you have any idea how many? This is above and beyond regular assignments in the class. To read all those, to find them, to categorize them, to identify themes, it's unbelievable. Another student said, I'm going to take a look at the first messages, the transcript of first messages by all of the members of the 12 in the first presidency from such and such a time to identify both the reactions of these men when they are called and the themes across generations. Now, you ought to read these. This was common when they did it themselves and they held themselves accountable. So you get real clear about what the expectations are. What is it we're trying to get to? How is it you think you best add to where we're going? Let's make sure we're in agreement on this. And you will come and render a judgment on how well you did. The Book of Mormon teaches that the judgment is a self-judgment. We're not going to have to have the Savior tell us where we go. We're going to know. Well, there's a principle in that that applies to what happens in an organization. But we're not very good at getting clear. All the stuff on the front end is hard. you got to get that pretty clear about what the expectations are and the parameters And then let them be anxiously engaged in a good cause and bring to pass much righteousness for the power is in them wherein they are agents unto themselves. Did that make any sense? Yes, thank you very much. Great question. Thank you.